Hello again everyone, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com. Got another new project to share with you. Uh, it's not a very common Navy, it's a Greek Type 214 submarine. Let's get into it. As I mentioned, this is a, a Greek 214 class, but it was manufactured for the Greeks by the German Navy. So the 214 is uh, an export version of the submarine. It's manufactured exclusively for export, and so the Germans don't operate these themselves. You'll see it's got some design notes in here, like the preceding Type 209 class, but it's also got some design language of the new Type 212. As an export boat, it doesn't have all of the technological advancements as the 212 does. Uh, for example, the non-magnetic steel hull or the uh, uh, X-style rear control surfaces. Uh, the 214 is also slightly bigger than the 212 at 65 meters in overall length. Propulsion for this boat, the full-size boat, is called air-independent propulsion, which is just basically uh, electric motors that run off of hydrogen fuel cells. Uh, it's an exceptionally high-tech solution to a silent submarine, and I know the 212 has been showing that the technology has proven itself out in real sea trials. This particular hull was manufactured uh, by a Greek gentleman and uh, put together and assembled by a talented builder by the name of Dwayne Hill, boats of which you've seen earlier as well. We went through this boat, tweaked it, modified it, added a 2.4 gigahertz radio control system, got it all finalized, and now we are gonna show you how it all goes together. All right, first thing that we need to do, obviously, is get into the boat to show you how it operates. Uh, it's super easy. You just kind of slip your fingers under the front here, give it a little lift, and slide it forward. It's a magnetic catch. You can see these big button magnets uh, in the bow here, and those snap together. They actually work really, really well. It's a powerful joint. Now, the reason you can get away with that in this particular boat is because there is no flotation foam in the upper hull. No, there is not. If there were, you would have an upward lifting force on the upper hull that could potentially disengage it. But as it stands right now, the upper hull is heavy. It just sits on that lower hull with no problem. And obviously it makes getting into it really easy. Here's the interior layout. You can see it's a little bit wet and we got some condensation because we literally got back from the pond a few minutes ago. Start at the back here. So a standard cruciform arrangement. In practical application, I'm surprised to report it actually had a fairly decent turning performance. Um, so that's surprising to me because typically these boats with this arrangement, when the upper rudder is out of the water, you don't get very good turning performance. But this was actually really, really good. Moving forward here, you can see we've got an intermediate drive shaft and then the linkages for our rudder and dive planes. These are coupled with magnetic linkage connectors right here. These were home brew solutions that uh, Dwayne came up with. We've got our watertight cylinder and this cylinder, which I'll show you a little bit more once we get it out of here, um, is scratch built by Dwayne and it uses his standard design methodology that he uses for almost all of his boats. So this is a brushed motor that's powered by a uh, Mtronics speed controller. We've got our servos for rear rudder and uh, rear dive planes. And then a 2.4 gigahertz receiver. You can see that runs out here. And then this is the extension and the actual antenna itself. Moving forward, we got an air pump and the ballast servo. The servo is what connects uh, to the vent linkages uh, and then also turns on and off the air pump. This is a nice system. I like it a lot. It's very similar to our 300 series subdriver. In that, in normal operation, this air pump will purge the tank of water, 
But in a situation where the boat is fully submerged and doesn't have access to surface air, there is a gas backup system inside. So there's a large copper pressure vessel in here. And when this linkage pushes all the way forward, it depresses a little valve and it blows gas into the ballast tank, expels all the water and up it comes. Something else I wanna show you we got a lot of foam uh, inside the ballast tank. Now, what I'm going to assume is that when Dwayne built this, he thought he needed a tank this big. But what he ended up needing was a tank this big. And so when you put foam into the ballast tank like this, you effectively reduce the volume. And this will save on uh, runtime for the pump, and it'll save on gas in the ballast tank when you uh, go to purge it. So this is a viable solution. If you find you've got too much ballast tank, you can use blocks of foam to reduce it. Moving up into the front here, we've, uh, we've got our forward servo for the dive planes, the forward dive planes. And this moves in a vertical direction, which is a little bit unique. You don't typically see that a lot. And that connects magnetically to the linkages in the upper hull. That cylinder braces the battery, keeps that all locked in. That's not gonna go anywhere. And the other thing that is in here, you slip this down, slide it forward, and this gets locked into place and it provides some foam, some flotation above the surface water line, but without pulling on that upper hull. Again, because you've got magnetic connectors on there, all of that weight is on the lower hull, or I should say all of the flotation is on the lower hull. So with that said, we need to go ahead and remove this. They've already undone these Velcro straps, and that's what holds this cylinder in. Now this is a, it's a snug fit, so we're gonna remove that plate that I just put in. I'm gonna pick up the front end of the cylinder here, if I can. You can hear that nice snug release of that cylinder. Let me get this trapped. There we go. So we pull up on the front, slide it forward, linkages come detached, and the drive shaft just pops right off. And then this just lifts up, and now we've got our cylinder. Um, not much more to show you in here other than that uh, speed controller is air cooled. So it has uh, circulation for the air. And then you can see the plumbing for the air pump going into the ballast tank. So this intake for the air pump connects to the intake hose in the upper hull, which is right here. And that in turn connects to the top of this little snorkel intake in the top of the tower. So even when the model is submerged, it's got access to fresh air. It can purge the ballast tank using that air pump alone. Like I mentioned, if for whatever reason the boat does submerge fully, that intake is covered, that's why you've got the gas backup system in place. Blows the, the ballast tank, purges all the water, and up you come to the surface. The only other thing to note uh, here in this upper hull is this exceptionally large periscope that you see here. And this is uh, designed over length so that you can thread that 2.4 gigahertz antenna that we talked about earlier up and through so that it sticks up out the top of the periscope and you get a good foot of periscope depth, which means it's really, really easy to maintain periscope depth uh, in this boat, still retain full control of it at all times. So now that we've said that, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna throw this cylinder back in the boat really quick. I'm gonna run through all of the various linkages and control surfaces, propulsion, the ballast system, and the fail safe. All right, let's take a look at all of the functions of the boat. First thing though that I want you to notice, before you go to the pond, you need to connect that air hose to the top of the tank, and that was to that nipple that I showed you guys earlier on. This would get threaded up through the bottom of the upper hull, and it would come out the top of the periscope, just like we talked about earlier. This gets put into place, slides forward, and locks. And then the last thing that you need to do is grab the um, power cable for the battery. And that's that right there, and of course, it connects to this. 
So first things first, we'll turn our radio on. Got confirmation, center the throttle, and connect power. The model is now powered up completely. We'll check the uh, functions. We'll start at the front here. The output for those forward die planes. In the middle, we've got our ballast system. So we can just watch this. I'm going to go to vent. You can see that vent valve opening there. A little bit further forward, and we will get our air pump. So you can hear that working. It's pulling air through here, and if I put my finger So that's pulling the air. Now if we go even further, it'll depress that gas blow, which is not charged right now, but it does. It purges air from that system. Going to the back, we've got our rudder. And we've got our dive planes. And that's the override for the rear planes, by the way, because they are on an automatic pitch controller that automatically adjusts the pitch of the boat to keep it in a neutral position. And then of course the last thing, we've got our throttle and that is just super smooth. You can see how slow it's spinning and then up to full throttle. So the last thing uh, that we're gonna do is test the fail safe functionality. And all of these radios are built with that functionality in it because the receiver has a little bit of a brain in there and it knows what to do once you tell it if it loses signal. So it's designed so that the forward planes will go to full rise, the throttle will drop to zero, the rear planes will go to full rise, and the ballast tank will go to emergency blow, which is that gas backup. So let's just test that, we'll pretend that we're driving around under like a quarter throttle and for whatever reason we're not paying attention and the boat drops below periscope depth. Turn the radio off, full rise, it goes to full blow and planes are on full rise and the throttle stopped. Turn it back on, we come back up to the surface and here we are. Got all of our control, back and it's like nothing happened. Love these fail safes, they're so fun to configure and you can do that all from the transmitter. You can tell the boat to do almost anything once it loses signal. All right, the last thing that you're gonna wanna do before you put the top on the boat is uh, this one last little block of foam. And this is really just the, the final step for perfect trim. And it just sits right here, it wedges into place through friction, and that's how it stays in place. And you just drop the top of the boat on, and you're ready for the pond. So there you go, a little technical overview of how this particular submarine is put together. Again, compliments to Dwayne Hill, who did the initial build up, and congratulations to the new owner, because I think he's gonna have a great time with this boat. Now, without any further delay, I'm gonna pass us off to the footage that we took at the pond to show you just how good of a performer this particular boat is. Now some notes that we noticed uh, out at the pond there. A few performance characteristics. As I mentioned, the turning performance was actually quite good, both surfaced and submerged, which again is a little bit surprising to me, but obviously a benefit for the new owner. It makes it a little bit more enjoyable to operate. So note to everybody, uh, I talked a lot about pre-mission checklists and uh, I've mentioned in the past that sometimes we forget well we did it again in our haste and, and I'm going to show you what we did with this really cool German 214. Um, we forgot the periscope uh, that keeps that antenna up out of the water and so we've MacGyvered a little bit of a solution with a stick and uh, the bright blue you know uh, zap strap will only help to improve the safety and visibility of the model and that's why we did it if anybody asks so we're gonna take this thing for its maiden voyage now see what it does 
This particular boat is not a speed demon by any stretch of the imagination, but it does proceed along at a very stately pace, uh, which is, in all likelihood, probably perfectly scaled to its one-to-one -one brethren. Submerged performance was exceptionally easy to maintain. Uh, it was very stable, it was easy to control, and it maintained periscope depth without me having to put any inputs into the controller after we got those stern planes dialed in with that rear proportional lever on the back of the transmitter. All in all, it's a fun boat to drive, and I'm really hoping that the new owner has some fun operating it this submarine season. With that, we are going to let you guys go. If you like what you see in this video, please like and subscribe. It helps us out here at the Dry Docks a lot. If you have any comments or questions, I would love to hear from you. Email me anytime, bob at nautilusdrydocks.com. With that, we're gonna let you go. Thanks for joining me, and hey, we'll catch you next time.